Joining me right now is Tennessee Senator and a Senate Armed Services Committee member, Marsha Blackburn. Senator, it's great to see you. Thanks very much for being here this morning. morning. And let me just uh, point out one yes. other piece of news. The prime ministers of Poland, Czech Republic and Slovenia are headed to Kiev today uh, to meet with uh, President Zelensky. They're planning to announce a broad package of support measures uh, for Ukraine. Should the U.S. be doing anything different or more right now, Senator? Well, first of all, I applaud these countries for stepping up and saying we're going to help our ally. And I, I, that's appropriate, of course, Poland with the refugees that are coming in and the other countries, Maria, that are right around them that are beginning to see an influx of refugees. Now, when it comes to the U.S., of course, we should have started before this happened. Sanctions should have been done last fall. I sent a letter to the White House. Lethal aid sales should have been done last fall. They are beginning to step up, but they're slow. They're late to the game. They should be doing more. The MiG-29s need to be there for Ukraine to protect themselves. Uh, more humanitarian aid, more lethal aid, so that they can put an end to what Russia is doing to their country. This attack on Ukraine was unprovoked. It is something that it is Vladimir Putin in his madman state who is wanting to go in and expand his reach, get the USSR back together. And so he is going into Ukraine. If he is successful there, he is going to keep going. I mean, where is this going, Senator? It, it feels like a slow burn of Ukraine. Two Biden administration officials reportedly told the Associated Press that the U.S. had determined that China signaled to Russia it would be willing to provide military and economic support following the invasion. Both Beijing and Moscow are denying these reports. But, Senator, we know that this partnership has only improved right. since the Beijing Olympics right. and since this invasion. You say China will offer the aid to Russia if it benefits its cause. Tell me about this relationship. Yes. Yes, that's exactly right. And, you know, they had announced, Xi Jinping and Putin had announced they had an unlimited friendship. And what we had needed to do, one of my pieces of legislation, which would re a sense of the Senate to remove Russia out of the SWIFT system in total, even for their energy. This would have given us a better idea of how far China is going to go. Of course, when the credit cards got cut, what did China do? Union Pass will backfill those credit cards. And now energy, they're saying they will buy the energy and will backfill Russia on the energy. So we need to see how far this is going to go. And Jake Sullivan should have laid down the law to China yesterday and said, look, if you do this, we are going to move forward with these sanctions. As a matter of fact, we'll go ahead and we'll put the sanctions in place because we know what you've done with credit cards. We know what you're doing with energy. And by the way, we're going to have an operation warp speed to address our domestic energy needs and become a net exporter of energy. That's what this White House ought to be saying to China. But no, they're not doing that. They're very timid in how they move forward yeah. using force with these other nations. Well, I mean, the Biden administration would like to see Iranian oil on the market. Let's face it, they are continuing to negotiate in this Iran deal. We have, we have some uh, headlines here crossing uh, the wires right now, and it says that uh, the Russian foreign minister, Lavrov, says that both oil consumers and suppliers will feel the return of Iranian oil deliveries to the market. Lavrov says Russia has received written assurances from the United States that sanctions will not hinder cooperation with the framework of Iran nuclear deal. So while the Biden administration is denouncing Russia's invasion of Ukraine, it is still 
talking about working with Iran on a deal with the help of the Russians, working, partnering with the Russians. Lavrov right. also said that the U.S.'s accusations that Russia is blocking the Iran nuclear deal are not true. Senator, your legislation to say no to the Silk Road Act would require new standards and guidelines yes. for China's digital yuan. Why aren't we seeing a stronger stance out of this administration against the bad behavior of the CCP? And we should be seeing that. My legislation would put those guide rails in place because you look at this axis of evil, Maria, with Russia, China, Iran, and North Korea. And what they are doing is partnering up so that they can pass the U.S. in global dominance. Xi Jinping wants to be globally dominant by the time we get to the midpoint of the century. They are all into propaganda, whether it's hard or soft propaganda. They are into partnering with Russia, and we'll see how far they're going to carry Russia before they dump them. Iran using their proxies. You've got Putin using mercenaries to go to the streets of Kyiv and carry out urban warfare. These are terrorists. And you've got now Biden saying, we're going to let Russia negotiate this deal for us. We're going to buy Iranian oil. We're going to buy Venezuelan oil. These are all dictators. We ought not to be doing business with them. We need to be producing our oil here and be energy independent. Russia's currency well, is oil. This is why we do not yeah. need SWIFT processing these sales. It is why we have to sanction China if they are going to process these oil sales for Russia. Yeah. Senator, it's great to have you this morning. Thanks very much. Thanks for your leadership on all of that. We'll keep watching it. Thank Good you to so see you. much. Senator Marsha Blackburn, and to you.